In the early stages of typing, rhythm should be kept constant, like the beat of a metronome. Beginners start off with a slow beat, anywhere between 40 and 60 beats, depending on how well the keyboard is known. One technique employed while learning rhythm is to type letters with the right hand, alternate to the left, then back to the right, and so on. And do it in syncopation. Each has four beats to it. A, G, E, space, one, two, three, four. Similarly, hop. Throughout the exercise, the typist strives for smoothness and evenness. Even rhythm, even stroke. Reading follows the same pattern. Spell out the words at the same metronomic speed as they are being typed. Sentences are broken down into letters and spaces. When the metronome is finally taken away, its rhythm will remain, and for the typist, a well-learnt lesson in rhythm is half the journey to good typing. Before typing, the paper guide must be set to the correct place on the paper table so that the margin can be kept constant. Now pull out the paper bale, always handling it on the extreme end, never in the middle. Learn to hold ordinary paper correctly. The thumb forces the paper into a small recess formed by the four fingers. In this curved position, the paper is easily managed and will not sag. This repeat action shows how it is efficiently carried out. Use a light touch when handling the paper. When inserting the paper, the left hand continues to support it until the cylinder is operated. Another much used method of operating the paper bale is to lift it, but hold it at the end. And remember to hold the paper correctly. The paper release is now operated and the paper is straightened against the paper guide. Now the paper release and the paper bale are set to grip the paper firmly and the machine is ready for typing. When paper is to be removed, the right hand operates both the paper bale and the paper release. And the left hand draws the paper out noiselessly. Perhaps 90% of the moves in a game like badminton depend on positioning, backing up, jumping forward. All maneuvering into position must be done in time so that the motion of hitting is sure and accurate. Similarly, in typing, every action is governed by the art of positioning. Consider the shift key action. Position, then press. It's done so quickly that without correct positioning, there would be many mistakes. 
Similar to the action of striking the character keys, the shift key action takes its direction from the home row. The typist should treat the shift action as three beats in the rhythm of typing. Depress, strike, and release. The action involves the simultaneous movements of two fingers, either of the little fingers on the shift key, and the finger on the opposite hand positioned for striking the letter to be capitalized. But both fingers must position as one action, so that as soon as the shift key is fully depressed, the capitalized letter strikes the paper, and both fingers return immediately to the home row. When these two actions follow through as one, the rhythmic beat of typing is uninterrupted. This is the carriage return. Of all typing movements, the carriage return is the most anticipated. Yet it's the slowest, because it's the only one that involves the movement of the hand. However, for a good typist, and for one who knows the particular machine well, the action can be reflexive without the mind or the eyes leaving the copy. The action itself is relatively simple. The hand flashes out, throwing the carriage with a snap action. Although the left hand commands the action, note the position of both hands before and after the operation. The right hand never leaves the home row. The left conducts an almost circular motion, following the action through to the home row. This is how the action looks in slow motion. At normal speed, here's the snap, both hand and carriage returning to position simultaneously. In the learning stages of typing, the typist should always be conscious of this action and attempt to master it. Anticipation and positioning is all it really takes. Manual and electric typewriters differ not only in the functioning of their parts, but in their shape as well. For instance, compare the slope of their keys. Whereas the manual has a notable slant, the electric keyboard has less slant so that the fingers are not as curled and the palms are parallel to the slant of the keyboard. The fingers hover over the keys rather than rest on them, so that there is less chance of activating the wrong key. But one of the really big advantages of the electric machine lies in the operation of its manipulative parts. In using the shift key, for instance, 
the little finger fans out and depresses the key as swiftly as other keys are struck, and the rhythm of typing is maintained. With the carriage return, the action is similar. The little finger of the right hand reaches over, strikes the return key, and quickly returns to its hovering position over the home row. Although the electric typewriter is a more efficient machine, a sloppy or careless typist will find it very difficult to use since it magnifies mistakes as well as good work. It is therefore wise to correct all mistakes in posture or fingering on the manual. Before attempting the efficiency of the electric typewriter,